Next one is from Chat Israel. Hope you like this. Uh, I have a question about Fusion Freak 60. What is the best way to import an STL file into Fusion and then get it prepared for 3D manufacturing on a wood CNC router? Okay, so I'm going to pick out a couple of things of this one, chat. I think this is really good if you're into CAM. I think this is... No. If you're into STL files, 3D printing, or CAM, I think you might like this. So what I'm going to pick out of this is the best way to import an STL file. I'm going to talk about how to get it prepared for 3D manufacturing um, f for that. So, so let's jump in and, and take a look at this. So I'm going to open up a new file, and I have, an, I have a... Uh, STL file that I've been using in different uh, in some different videos. The best way to bring in an STL file is to go to insert and go and say insert mesh. Um, and by the way, whenever you're working with 3D printers or STL files, the best thing is just to work with millimeters. I would say this, and I might get in trouble. Somebody can correct me. That's okay. Um, my rule, <laughs> Lars's rule, is if I got to 3D print something, I do it in millimeters. I don't try to go from, from, from imperial, from inches to metric. Just start in metric. Um, so so for, for this here, use millimeters and go and say insert mesh and then bring in your, your STL file. STL file, yes. Now, when you're looking at this file, we use this one and other ones. It doesn't look super complex, but just know that this one is actually fairly, this is a pretty big model, as you will see. It's a big size of a model, uh, as you can see. Now, if you bring it in like this, you get it in as a mesh file in here, um, and, and that might be okay for you. If I hit okay here, this might be, be fine uh, for you. Actually, for what you're trying to do, chat, this is actually okay because you can machine mesh files inside of Fusion 360. This is just a mesh file. Um, so let me show you that first. But if you are into 3D printing and working with, with mesh files, don't go away because you're going to like what I'm going to show you. But there is, you can actually machine. So you said 3D machining. You can use all the 3D uh, machine tools inside of Fusion. It actually works on mesh files. The trick is that when you select your your setup in here and you get your of course you got to do all your your work like make sure you get your um, sorry make sure you get your Z axis the right direction and all this stuff but the trick is you have to make sure that you select the model in the setup and select that mesh file. It needs that to know that it's machining um, the mesh. And then you actually also have to go in and you have to work a little bit with your uh, with your stock uh, in here. You can see the stock is a little bit off on, on this. So you have to, to change that too. But now what I'm trying to get at is that all your three axis tool path will actually work with a uh, MS file. You just gotta remember, like I just did, um, to click on that mesh file, um, like there, in the setup. You gotta select that mesh file there. But you can see that it throws all these uh, these these tool path on it. You can completely machine it, three D machining it. So I hope that that was useful for you, chat. But I want to get back to it again though, because it's not hundred percent fair for me to just stop there. I feel like. Let me go back in and open a new file um, because I want to talk a little bit about mesh files. Um, if you want to bring in an S a mesh file, an STL file, and it's big like the one I have, there's actually a couple of tricks to it. One trick is to go in and turn the history line off. So right click up here on the top, click do not capture history tree. That will get rid of the, the line down here. Now click insert. Insert mesh, select that same file. Okay, hit OK. Now what you can actually do is you can right click on it and you can say mesh to BRAP. And what that means is bringing a STL file to become a solid. Now, why would you do this? Many times we're doing it for the simple reason <coughs> to, excuse me, 
us and now the sun is going away again uh, the simple reason we will bring it a mesh file into become a fully solid is so we can like cut holes through it or make a cut in half and do different things with it it's not always necessary to do but if you want to manipulate it you probably want to get it to a solid now when I do that here though I'm going to select it you will see that the conversion has been aborted and the reason is that when I brought this one in look how many triangles there is there 213,330 triangles I said this was a pretty big mess file um, to me that's a big mess file we need to bring it down I think around 15,000 or so we can do that inside of fusion actually if we go to click on your name click on preferences go to the preview and make sure you have the mess workspace turned on here you have that turned on we can right click on it here and um, actually I think we have right click and if we go do we do convert no right click oh here here it is. <laughs> they changed it up here <laughs> Whew, getting old uh, up here there is a mesh toolbar up here because the new interface and if you click on the mess tool that will appear up there when you have a mess body when you have a mess body in the screen the mess toolbar will appear as you just have looked up here and in here you can reduce uh, the triangles and um, you will see that I have kind of like the paintbrush selected is so I'm going to change that to a window select the whole thing and then uh, now you can break down um, the, the reduce the triangles now when you do this it will get it will get rougher so let's just hit okay to this one time so you will get less triangles what means the model will physical change um, it's kind of hard to see right now but if we go back and we try what we did before let's get back out to solids right click on this and say mess to b wrap hit new you will now see it's down to 53,332. Conversion has been aborted. So it's still too, too, too many triangles here. And I've done a lot of live streams on this. If we go back in again, reduce it more. Um, you can play. I would absolutely be playing with how the density is here to see what the, the stress limit is. I'm going to run it again. Um, let's go back into solid and do it one more last time. B rep, you will now see that it is under, I think it's 15 or 20. It's down to 13,332. And it says it, it is still large, but it can actually do it now. And it can turn it into to a solid there. So chat, I hope that this was useful for you. In, so now you actually have that, now it's a solid model. Now it has all those facets on it. You can, you can change some of those with some of the mess tool. That's another video. Um, but I hope, Chad, that this was useful for you, that you can actually apply free exit toolpath. You said 3D machining on a mess file. You don't have to convert it, but if you do want to convert it, that is the way you can convert that there. Now you could use all the, the cam tools inside of that. Useful, Chad? I surely hope so. It is a Memorial Day here in the United States. It's a holiday. It's almost like a Sunday. Just getting through some of my emails here. Um...